Whether you have a diagnosis or not, I don't care. I'll teach you how to find what's causing your health concerns using the labs you already have. Your doctor might tell you your blood work is normal, but I'm here to teach you a better way. If you're a doctor or a health coach and anything in between, there's one for you too. Download your cheat guides and register here at drkylieburton.com. This podcast is sponsored by Systemic Formulas and Nutribiome. Systemic Formulas, the supplement company I trust with my patients and family. Instead of ordering from a handful of companies, I use 95% SF products. They're top of the line quality with the best lab west of the Mississippi. They're pure, potent, and they get results. In fact, I recommend you follow their Instagram at Systemic Formulas Institute. Also, the man who's behind the Systemic Formulas products, Dr. Shane Morris, is launching a new line of supplements designed to take your microbiome to the next level. He has specific prebiotics designed to feed the probiotics. Learn more and order soon at mybiome.com. All right, let's jump into the episode. Welcome to the Beyond the Diagnosis podcast with Dr. Kylie. We are right here in season four, over a hundred episodes in. And when I started a year and a half ago, I never would imagine what it would have turned into, but I'm so glad you guys are here. You're listening and you are starting to change your health by changing the way you read your normal labs. Today's topic and conversation is going to be with LaCrista Odell. We're going to talk about parasites, the myths the facts, and the reality of parasites. Now, her and I were just at a conference together all about parasites. And if you're curious and thinking, do I have parasites? Well, LaCrista has a great way to know if you have parasites or not. Yes, uh, if you have a pulse. Yeah, so literally, put your two fingers (laughs) right here. (laughs) And if you have a pulse, you have parasites. Yes, they're completely unavoidable in the world that we live in. And I think that's a big misdemeanor, misnomer, because people are like, well, I haven't been to a third world country. There's no way I have parasites. Um, if you have dogs and cats, they breed them. If you eat fruits and vegetables, they're probably in them at some point in their lives. And really, it's not a matter of where do we get these things? It's a matter of, are they impacting our health? detrimentally or not. Right. So LaCrista, tell us a little bit about your background and why you do what you do. So I'm a registered nurse. Um, I started out um, as a nurse about a little over 15 years ago and um, got diagnosed with some autoimmune things and was kind of failed by the Western medicine, as many are with autoimmune. And when I got pregnant with my daughter, I had to stop all my medication and got really sick. So, um, and because I had worked in deli- labor and delivery, I decided that I was not going to have my next two babies at home. I, mean, I wasn't going to have them in the hospital. I was going to have them at home. So Because you worked, worked in labor and delivery. That's Because correct. I worked in labor and <laughs> delivery and I knew what went on and I knew uh, that's not the path that we wanted to go down. We um, wanted as little medical intervention as possible. And so uh, my midwife comes in and she's like, girl, you are so sick. Like, I've got to send you to this lady that I know. And she is, you know, amazing. And like within a few weeks I was better. So I was sending everybody I knew to her. And um, she was, I, one day I called, I was like, you're just so far away. I want to send some of these people, but it's like all day trip, two hours up there. And then, you know, your appointment two day, two hours back. She, and I was like, what would you think about opening like a branch office? Like I could work under you and you could train me. And she was like, you don't need me. Like you have the credentials. You just have to go through the training. So over the next few years, I started going through the training to do that and um, just worked part time for several years. And then in January of 2021, just this year, I um, went full time. I was kind of pushed out of the medical field. Uh because of you just barely went full time. I've been doing it part time for a while. Uh, I yeah, I went. Um, I was full part time working evenings and weekends. But because I live in such a small community, <clears throat> I really didn't think that it. 
it would be able to support me full time. And then it was just kind of an act of God where I was forced out and um, because I was speaking out too much against, you know, big pharma and the hospital systems and um, they don't like that a whole lot. So um, I I got suspended because of it too. Yeah. So I just kind of stepped down the lady I worked for. I loved her. She had her own um, home health company and I wasn't even working hands on with patients because I just didn't feel right about it. I was doing things, uh, billing and coding and things in the office for her. And I just said, you know, I don't want to jeopardize your business because of something I know is my calling. And this is what God has called me to do. And so I can't stop speaking out about it. And so, but I don't want to jeopardize your livelihood. And so I stepped away and I mean, we have a really good relationship still and she completely understood, but um, one of our biggest referral sources was like, get your nurse off social media or I'm not referring to you anymore. And so she was like, it's a free country. I can't tell her she can't post on social media. So I just said, you know what? Like, I think it's time for me to just go full time. And um, obviously you see where things are at now. It took off yeah, you, way you quickly. Have blown up really quickly. If it you guys are not so following LaCrista faster. on Instagram, you need to go follow her on Instagram. Her Instagram is at LaCrista Odell and we'll put it in. So it's L-A-K-R-I-S-T-A-O-D-E-L-L. And she will yeah. not bite her tongue. So go I follow shadow her and you'll get the truth. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to talk to you about your leap because I know a lot of ladies and, and practitioners, Western medicine trained doctors are listening in on this and they're in the similar shoes that you once were. And you just said, you know what? I've been doing this. This is my heart. This is the calling I need. I just need to take the leap of faith. And, and that leap of faith has now not only provided you with a full income, but it's provided a lot more than a full income. Yes. Um, so I've actually had to hire an associate practitioner. She'll be done with her training pretty soon. She'll be taking patients in January. We've bought a new building, um, bringing on a nurse practitioner, like things are going really quickly. And I was just talking to my associate practitioner about this yesterday. And she's like, some people don't understand when they're like, don't put all your eggs in one basket, because she wanted to open a preschool and she, but she loved holistic health because it healed her, you know, muscle testing, which is what I do in person, healed her. And so she's really passionate about that. And they were like, people were just discouraging her from turning away from building a preschool to go into this. And she's like, people just don't understand like the pull that I'm feeling from the Lord, like healing people, you know, and then maybe it comes full circle you know, from our conference this weekend talking about autism and she loves working with autistic kids. She's like, maybe I'll learn how to do this. And then it circles back around and both of those dreams come together. She's mm-hmm. like, but it's not just like, oh, I love this. I want to do it. I get messages on Instagram literally every day from nurses and dentists and physical therapists going, I want to get into whole, the holistic field. Like, what do I do? And they'll tell me part of their story. And it's always something has happened to them that the Western medicine was not able to help them with. And then they're like, I just feel like, I feel like I'm supposed to go this way, but it's almost like a, like a nagging pull. Like you can't, the people that are meant to go down that path, you can't not go that way. And if you don't go that way, you're going to constantly feel that pull to go that direction. So those are the people that I know you can tell when you meet them, just like you, like we're supposed to be here. Like this is where we're meant to be and we're passionate about it. And everybody usually has that little backstory of like something happened. And this, I always tell people like everything happens for a reason. Like every trial you go through, like who would have known me being diagnosed with Lyme and lupus and RA would lead to me being able to heal other people. But that's so many people's story. Like so many people's story starts that way. Yeah. Mine doesn't. Mine was when I learned about functional medicine, like, this makes so much sense. Why, why is this not mainstream medicine? You're in the minority though. I know. Just going to the conference. You're like the person who's like light bulb. What? So yeah, this is, this was me and I'm, I'm experiencing it as an assistant getting told about all of these health problems, but as a female, they would tell me a lot more versus the male doctor. And I said, why? they're not getting the help they need. Why don't I just go get the freaking degree, the expensive piece of paper 
is all I call it, and help these ladies in ways that they're not getting it. Right. And then the whole world crashed down and I was like, oh, I'm virtual already. So perfect. Let's, let's do this virtual thing. Now that everybody knows what Zoom is, I was already there before it was cool. Maybe you have a direct line to the Lord and he was just like, okay, go functional medicine. The rest of us had to be like beat over the head with an <laughs> autoimmune bat to be like, wake <laughs> up. This isn't working, you know? <laughs> well, the power of you being Western medicine trained. I mean, I was Western medicine trained in a sense where that's all I knew. I knew nothing about chiropractic. I knew nothing about nutrition, nothing about functional medicine, nothing. And then it was like, as soon as I got introduced to it, it was just, wait a second. There's a trigger for there, an autoimmune? Yeah. It's not genetic? <laughs> there, I mean, you can, there's impact and there's ways to not necessarily cure, but I always just say, kick it to the curb, whether you have an autoimmune yeah. or not, let's kick it to the curb. So for those of you who are practitioners and you're listening and you're like, it was bad before COVID and now it's like awful. Take the leap and just see where it takes you because you'll never know unless you take the leap. Yes. And we need more soldiers in the army. We do. <laughs> we do in a major army. And if you're like, I just need some help and some encouragement and some business mindset stuff because I was not business minded at all. Come jump inside the mastermind, btdmastermind.com, yes. and I can help you get started. I will literally turn over everything that I have to you so you can hit the ground running. Um, you know, it's so weird. That. So, many, so many people are like, I don't want to offend you, but I may want to do like something in the holistic realm. I'm like, listen, you have never met people with more of an abundance mindset when you start working in the holistic health field. Like, we're like, there are so many sick people. We're like, we need help. Come help us. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we'll give you everything. Just start seeing people. <laughs> yeah, the abundance mindset is something that we need more of in this world in general. And yeah. too, especially in the medical field. It's not like you and I are, we're not competing against each other. We are no, supporting there's... each other. And yeah. like, listen, if you have a question, you shoot me a message. If I have a question, I shoot you a message. And it is without it's that way with other practitioners as well, because we're all in this together. And yes, we need more armies. We need more soldiers in the army. So come join the force. Yes. All right, LaCrystal, let's talk about parasites. I had a question the other day that said, this lady who was just experiencing the moon, full moon phase, whatever, what is it called? Yeah, the full moon, the full, full moon, moon challenge. Was she doing the challenge? Yeah, she was doing the challenge. She was doing the full moon challenge. And I'm new to this as a introduced very heavily into it last weekend. <laughs> you got drowned I mean, in it last weekend. Yeah. And like she says to me, I'm pool. seeing worms coming out of my stool and it's just absolutely nasty. When are these things going to get out of me? And I had to shoot her an email back and I said, I hate to tell you, but they're never going to be completely gone. And she's like, that's disgusting. These things are inside of me. I would rather have them out and it than in. And I said, it's going to be an ongoing process, but just know that we are human. We are yeah. creatures and there are creatures living inside of us. Yep. It's not going to be okay. Now I'm done kind of thing. Yeah. So how I tell people just to manage it. Um, we use, I, I use cell core products for my parasite cleansing and they have something called a para kit. And so it has para one, para two, para three, and then a binder in there because you want to bind up these toxins that the parasites are releasing when you go in and clean them out. Yeah, let's so stop right there really fast. Okay. So many people travel internationally and they's like, oh, I had a parasite and they put me on some medication and they're thinking that that solved the issue. No, yeah. that created a worse issue because if it supposedly killed these parasites, it released all the junk that was inside the parasites, yeah. including toxins, and nothing went back in to clean those things up. So if you're listening yeah. and you're like, well, I traveled for, in my world, LDS missions are a big time deal. And they go to South America or Africa or somewhere for two years. And they're just living with the people, drinking the water, all that kind of stuff. 
and get really, really deathly sick, like hospitalized sick. They're put on some type of antibiotic or some type of antiparasitic. And when, and you just said, you have to include a binder with those because that will destroy. You've got to go in and clean up the mess. Right. Well, let's get that clarified right now. Just because you've supposedly done some type of parasitic cleanse before, whether it was a medication or whether it was herbal, that doesn't mean one, it got the job done, two, it got the job done right, or three, you need more. You don't need more of it. Right. So we'll get back to that because we were just talking about the Trojan horse before we started recording. But <laughs> yes. so what I recommend is, of course, you have to open up your drainage pathways. So I always have them do something it's like that. If your bowels aren't moving regularly, um, the cell core has one called bowel mover. And then what's the regularly? Well, now once a day, but if you're cleansing, you need to be moving two or three times a day because if you're, you have to be eliminating things as quickly as you're killing them off, or you have what's called a Herxheimer or a detox reaction. So I always recommend people take the bowel mover because even if you're going once a day, the parasite cleanse will slow things down for some people. So just to keep them moving. So um, when you get on there and look at the paracet, there's different phases. There's a beginner, intermediate, and advanced. So what I recommend is people do the beginner the first month around the full moon, and it tells you how to do that then do intermediate, then do advanced on the third month. And then I have people do the advanced quarterly. So that's going to keep everything out, everything that you're being exposed to. Cause people are like, well, you know, you say to do grounding and you know, all of these different things and how do we, and we have dogs and animal, how do we, once we get them out, how do we keep them out? You don't, you just cleanse regularly. So three to four times a year, go in and do the advanced cleanse. And so that's kind of what I recommend. So back to what you were saying about the toxins is parasites are like sponges and we call the, this weekend they refer to them as the trojan horse but they can hold bacteria yeast toxins of all kinds <clears throat> and there was actually a study that they sampled a parasite and then like the host tissue and the lead level in the parasite was 2700 times higher than the host and the cadmium levels were 500 times higher. So they're like leaching up all these heavy metals and all these toxins. And then they secre they put a biofilm around themselves to hold in all the bacteria and everything. Yeah, these guys are smart. They know very, how to hold this very food, stealthy. food in and they know how to live and survive and replicate. And so that's really, I tell people when you have recurrent viral infections, like you have herpes simplex and you can't get rid of it, or you have Epstein-Barr mono, you can't get rid of it. You probably need to do a parasite cleanse because they're hiding in the biofilms. You go in after it with like, say antibiotics or some kind of antiviral, even if it's just natural herbs. And what it does is it pushes it into hiding. It pushes it into the biofilms of these parasites. So you're in remission, right? You don't have any symptoms, but, but then the longer you stay off of these supplements, they creep back out. And that's why people with Lyme are like, well, I have to, as long as I stay on antibiotics, I'm okay. Well, because as long as you stay on antibiotics, you're forcing that bacteria, the Borrelia or Babesia or whatever you have into the biofilm of these parasites and it's staying there. So the real way that you need to treat this is you need to go in and do a parasite cleanse. Then you're getting rid of the bacteria. You're getting rid of the parasites. There's nowhere for them to hide. And then you do these parasite cleanses regularly to make sure that they don't have a place to hide. And so that's the best way to keep those things knocked out. And when you say hide, are we talking the gut? Or are we talking a lot more than just the gut? <coughs> we also stayed in a mold, moldy hotel this weekend. So um, they can hide anywhere that parasites are. So you've got the parasite and they secrete a biofilm and then all of these things can hide inside that biofilm. So for example, strongyloides is a type of parasite, a very common type. It's actually the type, a type of parasite that can be treated with ivermectin, which is, you know, talk of everything right now. Which is so, supposedly, um, you can't use it. And I've heard of when people who are prescribing it getting fired over it. Yes. Um, so, so once again, if you're in Western medicine, take the leap. We need more of right. you in the field. So the strongyloides actually have a life cycle in the lungs. 
So people that have like asthma and respiratory issues could very well be a parasite issue. But people just don't think like that. And you can walk up to a doctor and be like, oh, they have asthma. Have you checked for strongyloides in the lungs? Or they have, might have parasites. They're going to be like, okay, you're crazy. But I've literally seen it happen. I've seen people do these parasite cleanses and they're like, I can go run and don't have any issues now. And so, and then I do muscle testing in person. And so I can actually tell where we have these vials of different parasites, actually where they're at in the body. And then they do these parasite cleansing and that's, you know, it all clears up. Yeah. I just want to touch on the whole location thing, because when people think about parasites and testing for parasites, they're going to do the whole stool analysis and right. the stool analysis, you might as well flip a coin because that's going to be as accurate as the stool analysis. That's only getting one little snippet in your stool. Parasites are smart. And they know everywhere. how to live and survive and thrive and replicate. And they can be in your lungs. They can yeah. be in any tissue in the body. When you're talking maybe Hashimoto's even, because it's so common, possible thyroid implications. Yep. Yeah, they can be anywhere and cause, um, I've seen people, there have been cases of diabetics that have parasites in their pancreas, which is going to cause blood sugar instability, blood sugar issues. Uh -huh. And, um, but it's just something that people in, if people in the United States don't think that we don't consider parasites. We're, in we're other immune countries, to it. Yeah. So in other countries, they weren't deworm themselves on a regular basis, just like they do their animals. Well, where do you think our food comes from? Where do you think our produce comes from? You know, and our animals, if we're worming our dogs and our, all of our other cats and whatever, and they live in our house with us, you know, how, how do we think we're not going to get that? So we just have to realize that they are a real issue and just treat them accordingly. There have been so many people that have gone, spent thousands of dollars on functional doctors and, you know, doing all kinds of expensive lab testing. And they come to me and I'm like, have you ever addressed parasites? And they're like, well, no, I mean, I did a stool test and it said I didn't have any. I'm like, well, I think we need to address parasites. I'm like, well, I don't have parasites. I'm like, you've gone through all these doctors. You have done all of the things. And these are your symptoms that correlate with parasites that's the missing piece that's what you need to take care of people don't correlate things like grinding your teeth at night that's a sign of parasites skin rashes it's not just gut things anxiety biting your nails like so many things that they mess with your nervous system so they're going to cause that anxiety they're going to cause you know nervousness that grinding your teeth when you sleep is a huge sign um and even with kids that complain of tummy aches at night, that can be a huge thing. Like those parasites start moving, they're nocturnal. And then you're really going to notice a spike in symptoms in the evening and then around the full moon as well. Oh, say that one more time. Parasites are nocturnal. Yeah, they move at night more so. I hear this also, so often sorry, before we jump into the next portion, when people are like, oh, it's my hormones because it's cyclical. Is it? Right. Or is it is cyclical it really? with something else known as parasites? Yeah. Hot flashes, right. night sweats. You know, we're like, oh, it's my estrogen. It has to be something wrong with my what's hormones it? because it's at night. What's is the it? direct, what's the organ that's directly linked to estrogen issues? Our liver right? Mm -hmm. So what happens if you get liver flukes, estrogen issues, right? So we just have to realize the thing that I say to my patients are like, Oh, I have this. Do you think it could be this? I'm like, anything can cause anything. You have to understand how complicated these processes are in the body. And like where there's one enzyme that's missing. Like we talked a lot about the CYP enzyme this weekend when you cut off or inactivate one enzyme, it can cause a whole cascade of issues that seem completely unrelated. Like when people look at me like I'm crazy, when I'm like, you had your gallbladder out? That's probably why you have migraines. They're like, what? 
migraines because of my gallbladder? I'm like, yeah, probably. And so I give them like two supplements and they're like, I haven't had a migraine. I'm like, it's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> so you just have to realize anything can cause anything. And so parasites are something that can be anywhere in the body. And because they are sponges and they hold on to things, they could really be the missing piece in the puzzle. And parasites, they excrete exosomes. Well, exosomes are viruses. So people that get recurrent viruses, you probably have parasites. For one, their parasites are probably making them and releasing these exosomes, or it's viruses they're hiding in the biofilms. And every once in a while, when your immune system gets downregulated, they're coming out and showing their ugly face. Yeah. <clears throat> One of my biggest pet peeves, I'm sure this is your pet peeve too, is when people say, well, what causes this? You go to events, church events or family events or get to, and you always get the questions. Well, Kylie, I'm dealing with this. What causes it? I don't know. And I don't care. That's really (laughs) what I want to say. My favorite is what supplement do you recommend for fill in the blank? (laughs) I'm like, there's not a supplement for an illness. Like it doesn't work like that in my world. It's what caused it. What we're going to go after the root cause. My grandma's the worst. I've told her a hundred times and she'll message me. Hey, I have a friend or she does real estate. I have a client, whatever they call them. Like they have arthritis. What do you have for arthritis? Like grandma doesn't work like that. (laughs) What do you take for headaches? (laughs) <laughs> like, it doesn't work like if, that. If it did work like that, we'd all be multi-zillionaires. Yeah, I could just make a list and sell you some stuff, but we yeah, got to dig a little deeper. The idea is we're getting to this underlying problem of parasites that can cause a systemic array of symptoms. So if you don't fit underneath an umbrella, that's okay. That just means that you don't have some name plastered next to your name on your medical record. <clears throat> and some pill that they can give you to quote manage your symptoms. So take a listen to this. Lyme lives in nematodes. Bacteria live in Ascaris roundworms. Mold lives in parasites. Viruses are stored in parasites. Parasites produce exosomes, also known as viruses. And viruses are sponges for heavy metals. So if you've done nine zillion detoxes, another detox isn't going to be yeah. very efficient because you're not yeah. getting down to the root cause of who's creating the toxins and who's housing the toxins inside them to begin with. So another really interesting thing is we we're talking about um, parasites holding on to heavy metals. Um, I had a patient who had gone through a lot of chelation, like IV chelation through her um Chiro- there's chiropractors here that do it and she's lost them that do it all over the country and so she had lived somewhere else and done IV chelation there's not a whole lot here in southern Oklahoma like it's not real popular but she lived somewhere else and done all these IV chelation treatments and then she comes here and she's like still testing I'm like you're testing for heavy metals she's like there's no way I'm testing heavy for or high for heavy metals well she had parasites also that hadn't been addressed and um also um radioactive elements are all in our soil so they come up through the groundwater well she drank well water she filtered it but it wasn't most filters don't catch radioactive elements well what do you wear when you get an x-ray to shield you from radioactive elements you wear a lead vest so her levels of lead either because she had parasites and it was being stored in the parasites or possibly because she was drinking radioactive water, the lead was there to protect her from those radioactive elements. So once we put her on uh, Mito ATP was the best thing for uh, radioact- uh, for radiation stuff, um, it started giving her really bad hot flashes. And it was like, that's your body releasing this stuff. So she did that started really slow on that. And then we did some of the heavy metal environmental toxin, the HMET binder, and she improved pretty quickly. She did full moon challenges too with the parasite cleansing, but there's just, you have to know how the body works. Like why have I done IV chelation and my lead levels are still high? Well, 
because you either have parasites or you're being exposing yourself to radiation. So once you learn how these things work in your body and why they're there for certain reasons, then you can start making the correlation over maybe what the missing piece is in your puzzle. Yeah. And if anybody of you are thinking like, oh my gosh, where do I get started? Vito ATP is a great place to start. It is going to fuel your mitochondria, which are these little guys. There's thousands of them in every single cell in your body. They're responsible for producing energy. And if your body doesn't have energy, it's going to fail. And enough, if enough cells within an organ fail, then you start to see decline in function. So Mito ATP, start there. If they're looking at starting an actual parasite cleanse, where do you recommend? Um, so if you have other health issues, what I recommend is the foundational protocol through CellCore. It's really easy. It's a four month protocol. So people that have other health issues as well, um, like adrenal fatigue or gut issues or um, thyroid issues, hormone issues, I recommend just going the four months doing the protocol and then around the full moon, just doing that full moon challenge for those days surrounding the full moon. That seems to work really well for people. Um, and I have a, a cell core support group as well. Um, it's linked in my Instagram bio where people post a lot of questions. So there's a lot of answers already there too. And the cell core website's really great at explaining why we do this around the full moon. We have that, that drop in melatonin that down regulates your immune system, the spike in serotonin that increases the motility of parasites. Um, and they have walk out very clearly what days you take, which products and how much. And so it's very self-explanatory on there of how to do that. So um, that's a really good place to start. I have some people that I personalize protocols for that work with me one-on-one, -on -one, but they still do the full moon challenges. Um, so I think it's always a great addition to any program, but if you're not working one-on-one -on -one with someone, um, at least doing the first step of the foundational protocol to open up your drainage systems, or just going through the whole foundational protocol is a really, it's good for people to do like at least once a year, like a, the new year, like the first quarter and just kind of reset everything. It's a really great protocol and it's easy. I mean, it's not a whole lot of supplements, um, but everything you take is, has the carbon technology in it. It takes it as far as it can possibly go within your body. And it's by far the best products that on the market for parasites and detoxing. Yeah. Which is another reason why I stress the fact that if you've done some herbal kind of thing for a parasite before, probably wasn't sufficient. Right. There are literally worms and other things I don't even want to say out loud that will come out in your stool <laughs> when you do this kind of stuff. And one you of the questions I prepared. Yeah, you got to be mentally prepared. You are going to see these things. And if you don't, it's okay. They're still working. And if you're like thinking, well, how do I know if I'm not seeing anything? Well, check the lights. The eosinophil marker is my favorite way to determine parasites or not. However, is, is it more of are parasites impacting your health negatively? Because as you've now known and we've discussed, they're in us. We are humans yeah. and they're in us. If your paras or sorry, if your eosinophil marker is above three percent, I highly recommend doing a parasite cleanse of some sort. So we just went over the foundational protocol, um, which will be on Lacrista's Instagram as well as her website, as well as my website. So check that out. Um, any other? And another factors? thing, I, like there are several people who are like i'm doing this parasite cleanse like and i like you said when am i ever going to get rid of them you should get to a point where you're not like actively seeing you're not purging them all the time but people that are seeing them all the time and they're not getting any less like they're like i'm actively passing parasites all the time you have to consider because they are sponges for these heavy metals maybe you have an environment that's conducive for these parasites so are you toxic in heavy metals? 
do you have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, SIBO or CIFO, where you're setting up an environment for them to come in um, where it's easy for them to live in your gut or wherever they're at. So once you start that parasite cleanse, if you're not improving, you need to look at maybe what's causing that environment to be conducive for these parasites and shut that down. Yeah, I love that. One of the other discussions we had at that conference was all about water and how yeah. water is a toxic source. So people hound on food and how you have to eat clean food. And yes, that's important, but your the air you breathe, the water you drink, you better be putting as much importance onto those factors as you are on your food, if not more. Right. Creating the ideal environment for you to thrive versus the parasites to thrive. Big yes. difference there. So here's, here are some common parasitic areas. The small intestine, pancreas, the gallbladder, liver, lungs, brain, sinuses, lymph, kidneys, stomach, large intestine, bladder, and even our joints. So Sounds about really anywhere. Everywhere. So people that have chronic cystitis, they'll come in and I'll test them and I'll give them para two and para three. That's usually what they test for. And then I usually, um, standard process has one called albaplex. That's a really good kind of helps flush out their bladder, but they almost always test for para two and para three for some sort of parasite issue. And they usually do have bacteria there, but I tell them bacteria is there because the parasites are there. You have chronic cystitis because you have chronic parasites. It doesn't have anything to do. Well, every time I do a UA, it, it cultures bacteria because you have parasites. Get rid of the parasites. The bacteria is going to go away. And it does. And people aren't realizing that it's not, you don't just have bacteria in your bladder chronically for no reason. And so that's a one, I, mean, I see that quite frequently. But with the brain, um, with me been, being diagnosed with Lyme in the past, one of the co-infections I have was Babesia and it's a parasite. And I have Babesia in my brain and it caused me for a long time to have like blurry vision in my peripherals and that was really all it did and so I just got used to that and uh, didn't really even notice it anymore and when I started using Cellcore products like in March Dr. Todd came up at a muscle testing conference and I was like hey just test me because I'm always one like I feel good I don't have either we talked about this this weekend like everybody's like I have adrenal fatigue and I can't eat this. And I, I have still have all these like lingering health issues. Cause that's how people get into this. They're chronically ill in this journey. You know, it takes a while. I'm like, I feel great. I don't have anything. I'm like muscle test me. He's like, you have Babesia in your brain. And I'm like, I've been told that before, but I really believe that because I don't feel like I do, you know? So it gives me the IS bab and IS boost and tells me to take it in these really high doses. And I felt like I had been hit by a truck, could not get out of bed the next, like I literally felt like I had been drugged. It was so hard for me to get out of bed for like a week. And then after I did, I still had headaches intermittently. And it took me because it just, when it's yourself, it's just different. It took me like two weeks to realize that I was doing it to myself because I was had put myself into this bad Herxheimer reaction, but we pushed through. I always say we're the worst it. doctors to ourselves. <laughs> I've had WO oil sitting on my shelf for weeks and I'm like fighting this sinus infection. Right. And then taking like all the immune set support. I'm like, this is an antibacterial. Why? And it's topical. Why don't I just right. plaster it all over my forehead? I would have solved my issue the day it started had I had a clear brain. Well, I took my I, I took my portable ozone this weekend to the hotel because I swear I'm so sensitive to mold. And I even turned it on. And then when I, the last day, you know, I got this cough and it progressed, it got worse yesterday and now it's a little bit better today, but that's what I tell people. I'm like, like, you know, I mean, what if I had not taken my ozone and been on top of it and not known like all the supplements to take, I would have be, I would be on antibiotics right now just because I don't know any better, but we know biotoxin binder works great for mold. I'm taking high doses of that doing, you know, the pair three mixed up in a you know nasal spray, like, I've got it covered and I'm already getting better in the, the hydroxygen nebulizers too. Those are great. But you just learn as you go through this, 
how things work and what supplements work for them. And it doesn't mean we don't ever get sick or come down with anything, but knowing what's going on in your body and knowing what to take for it to help you get over it makes it you know less severe the next time around you don't continue to get really really sick every time you're exposed to something because your body learns how to fight it off yeah and once again you said mold that is the environment that is not our food it is the environment so if you're like i am like eating nothing and yet i still have all these symptoms well it's because not food's fault yeah probably the environment other factors is probably parasitic underlying components. So I just pulled this research up. It says Lyme bacteria hides inside parasitic worms causing chronic brain diseases. And I think yeah. back to even like Parkinson's, um, if I could just get them to believe I have a handful of people going on in my mm-hmm. mind that have these horrible autoimmune conditions and they are just indoctrinated to think that this is the way it is. And no matter what I do, I'm going to end up on disability anyways. If that's the way you're going to think, don't walk into my office. Don't even talk to La Christie either. Yeah. Well, and I've just really, um, <clears throat> it's gotten to the point where we're so busy that when people come in and I'm working with them and I just, you know, and it's a hard conversation to have, but you just have to say like, you know, we've been brainwashed and that's not how God created our bodies to work. He created our bodies to heal. And that's what we're healed here to do. So if you are not, we're not on the same wavelength, then I'm not going to be able to help you. Yeah. And, you know, I've had people that just will not even consider changing any of their medication. Like your medication is what's keeping you sick, you know, and not no, saying, no, like, it's okay, not. It's supposed to help me manage this stuff. The, um, I think we talked about glyphosate a lot this weekend about being in the medication and in the vaccine, in vaccines, like MMR is the most, <clears throat> you're constantly poisoning doses. yourself. So, you know, you just, and especially like things like omeprazole, like I have to take it to manage my reflux. Well, I can't get your stomach acid levels up if you take omeprazole yeah. every day. So you're going to have reflux forever. Like you've got to help me out here, you know? So, um, those are the type of people that are really hard to work with, but there's some people that come in. Most of the people, by the time they get to us, they're willing to do whatever we tell them to do because mm-hmm. nothing else has worked. And those are like my dream clients. I'm like, Oh yes. Let me write it all down for you. <laughs> yeah. The other factor too, is I've had so many who are in the right mindset and they're ready and they're willing to do the work and then they go home and the home environment whether we're talking mold or water or whatever, where I'm talking mindset here, where they're turning back on the TV or their spouse is telling them that it doesn't matter what they do or they search Google and it's like, whatever we just talked about within our session now just gets flushed right down the toilet and you're back into the world again. Yeah. Like you've got to prepare yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, all the above, because that's what it takes to truly get healthy and to stay healthy long-term. Yeah, mindset is huge when you're going through a healing journey. Yes. All right. Any final last words? Oh, I don't think so. I think we give one lot. example of like the miracle that you've seen in somebody's life. Since you took the leap of faith and got out of Western medicine and your nursing stuff, you're able to practice freely. And when I say practice freely, that means we don't take insurance because insurance dictates what you get to do. She practices freely, just like I do. That way you can truly heal. And when people ask me, well, do you take insurance? Insurance doesn't take me. That's what I say too. It's not me. It's the insurance company. Yeah. So, um, so one example, the miracle you've seen. So just on the parasite topic, uh, recently I had a little boy, um, about, it had been almost a year ago, I think about 10 months. He had a really bad constipation episode. Um, his mom took him into the doctor and they gave him, um, like the go lightly stuff that you take before a a colonoscopy. Um, he was four or five. They completely cleaned him out. Same situation the very next week. 
And so they're like, he's going to have to take Miralax every day. And that has so many side effects long term. So she's like, I don't want to give him this every day, but I don't know what else to do. And it got to the point that he was having constipation so bad that it was hurting when he was going to the bathroom. So then he started trying to hold it. Uh-huh. Well, then it made things worse. He eventually lost function of his bowels. So at five years old, he can't even feel when he has to go to the bathroom. He was just having three or four accidents a day because she had him on Miralax. So he didn't get constipated and he was having multiple accidents. Oh, look, a day. Poor little boy. So he comes in. Um, we do muscle testing. I identify several food sensitivities, a couple parasites, and then put him, I think hydroxygen was one to help with some mitochondrial stuff. Um, I gave him some enzymes to help with the food sensitivities, told him what to take out of his diet and gave him para three from, he was having two to three accidents a day, some days more, but at least two or three. And over that next month from his first appointment to his second appointment, he had two accidents. He said he can actually feel when he has to go to the bathroom again. So that was just from food sensitivities and a parasite cleanse. So she was actually going to have to like homeschool him because he was embarrassed to go to school because he was wearing pull-ups and he's five years old. So he's doing perfectly fine now and all parasites and some food sensitivities, which I think he's doing okay on the food sensitivities now because now he can feel when he has to go to the bathroom and it's not. Well, I was just going to ask you, like now that you've done the parasites, Mm -hmm. can he go back and eat those foods again? I usually recommend slowly reintroducing one food at a time. And so I think that's what they're kind of working on now. It's been a couple of weeks since I've seen him. So they're slowly reintroducing, but from his first appointment to a second, I mean, having two accidents from two to three a day was huge. So, yeah. And that just gives everybody hope to keep moving forward on the right path. So now that we've discussed parasites and the creepiness of them and how we all have them in us, don't just go jumping into parasite stuff on your own, especially with these products, because they can rock your world and healing takes time and it is a roller coaster ride. Like LaCrista said, when she started out the para two and para three, she was bedridden for two weeks. Like these things happen because your body is doing work. And it's work that's never been forced to do before. So don't just take that leap and say, I'm going to start doing this on your own because we're here talking about it. Make sure you are working with someone, LaCrista or I, or anybody else in your area. I know this is worldwide and I know CellCore products are also worldwide. So if you need to find a practitioner in your area that will help you through the process, do it. Um, Otherwise, we're here to help when we can. And know that these are a big factor in chronic conditions. Right? Sounds good. All good things. All right. Thank you, girl. Uh, Next time we see each other will be, I don't know when. (laughs) I'll see you when I see you. That's what I used to tell my husband when we were like dating. I lived in Portland, Oregon. He lived here in Utah. And I'd see him every three months after a quarter. And I'd just say, okay, I'll see you when I see you next time. (laughs) Here we are six years later and we're married. So, Oh my gosh. I love that. All right. Adios ladies. Whether you have a diagnosis or not, I don't care. I'll teach you how to find what's causing your health concerns using the labs you already have. Your doctor might tell you your blood work is normal, but I'm here to teach you a better way. If you're a doctor or a health coach and anything in between, there's one for you too. Download your cheat guides and register here at drkylieburton.com. This podcast is sponsored by Systemic Formulas and Nutribiome. Systemic Formulas, the supplement company I trust with my patients and family. Instead of ordering from a handful of companies, I use 95% SF products. They're top-of-the-line quality with the best lab west of the Mississippi. They're pure, potent, and they get results. In fact, I recommend you follow their Instagram at Systemic Formulas Institute. Also, the man who's behind the Systemic Formulas products, Dr. Shane Morris, is launching a new line of supplements designed to take your microbiome to the next level. He has specific prebiotics designed to feed the probiotics. Learn more and order soon at mybiome.com, M-Y-B-Y-O-M-E.com.